And I'll be in the books, and we're well into BYU. We uh, had our customary Sunday where we uh, review the film and go out and make corrections, and, um, and now we're preparing for BYU. So we'll meet with them this afternoon and, and go out and do a light practice and then hit it hard um, Tuesday and Wednesday. So a lot of good things came out of the UNLV game and a lot of things that we need to correct, and uh, felt like we made a lot of strides that way last night. So just excited about a great opportunity to go to Provo. I've never played there. I'm not sure how many of our guys have, if any. And uh, great environment. And it's a great team. Um, and uh, should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. Was Eddie's tweet accurate about his knee? Being I didn't see his tweet. I'm sorry. A mild strain. And he's just yeah. Okay. Well, I hope. I mean, he'll go through the week, and you know, hopefully, he'll be available on on Saturday. But I didn't see his tweet. But it wasn't anything that's uh, you know like we thought after the game. It's nothing that uh, is. Uh, going to keep him out for an extended amount of time. Did the, the test came back negative as far as like MRI? Or? No, I mean, the test shows something, but mm -hmm. nothing significant in terms of injury or extended amount of time missed. It's just how fast he heals and, um, and how well he feels on Saturday. You know, being able to get him out there would be uh, something that we, we'd love to see, obviously. You guys had some pretty good variety in both the running game and the passing game as far as our receiving. 14 guys, I think, caught passes. A bunch of guys ran the ball. Is it nice to see kind of the diversity that you have as far as options? It really was. I, it was 13 to 14 different receivers, which is impressive. And then, you know, five backs touched the ball, including I knew. Now, he didn't carry it, but he caught, caught a couple. Um, you know, so to be able to work that many players into a game especially early in the season, you know, I think it's a great learning experience for us. You know, you want to get guys time in games. The best time to learn is, is during those 60 minutes of competition. You know, practice is one thing, and it's great, and you have to do it, and you work on the fundamentals and, you know, perfect your craft. But under the heat of, of real competition, I think, is where you, you get your greatest gains. And so to be able to get as many players in the game playing as we did, I think down the line should really, really help us. The first half against BYU last year was the first real adversity Josh had faced as a quarterback. How did that sort of shape his progression over the course of the season? You mentioned learning on the job in the game is the best yeah. experience. I don't, I don't really remember. Let me think about that first. So he only threw a couple of interceptions, right? Three, yeah. I think. In the first half? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that is a little adversity. Uh, you know, I think that it, it kind of confirmed for me and, and for us and you know, hopefully for everyone else, what we thought about Josh in terms of being a competitor, that uh, he understood that there was going to be some difficult times, that there was going to be some halves or some games or some series that weren't going to be perfect, and yet he has been able to uh, maintain a sense of poise and calm and focus and recover from events like that. You know, I, I, uh, I appreciate it about him, and I think it's a sign of a, a tremendous competitor. You know, it's an, you get in environments like, like these guys are in on Saturdays uh, against teams that are as competitive as you, it's, it's not always going to be smooth, you know, and uh, to be able to recover is, is a key component of being a, a great player, and I think that he shows that on a consistent basis. The last time you said I went to BYU, I know different team, different players, but they, they won 59 to nothing. Were, were, were you, UCLA did or BYU? No, BYU did. Oh. Would, would you, would that even come up as like a, the, this is what can happen if we're not ready kind of thing? Or? No. I wasn't here and none of these players were here and I didn't know it. They don't know it. I'm not going to bring it up. They don't care. <laughs> Nobody cares. So it's like uh, USC beat UCLA 50 to nothing one time. And I don't think that affected us the next next time we played them. So you made some changes offensively and defensively to maybe combat some of the things that the BYU's and the Stanford's do. Do you view this as maybe that first opportunity to prove uh, that the changes were warranted? Well, BYU is more of a spread team, so uh, they're going to do some things that are a little bit more fam familiar to us in terms of you know Texas A&M and UNLV. Stanford will be the you know the the, the different type of offense that we'll see. Is, is there anything you've learned about Soso in the first two games that you, you didn't already know, you know, going through training camp? No. No. Going through the first training camp, yes. Uh -huh. Going through the second training camp, no. You know, during the first training camp, when he was a freshman, uh, there was times that he seemed a little bit hesitant. But once we saw him in, in real competition, which the first time with real competition was a scrimmage, he just kind of, you know, played at a different level. And uh, I think we're seeing that now. You know, 
he's a really good player, and he, and he, and he works hard, and he's tremendously motivated, and, uh, and he's gotten bigger, and, and you know, he's got the, that deceptive speed. I don't think people realize how fast he is because he's so smooth. But uh, you know, I think that uh, he just continues to impress us as a, as a young man we can count on. Is there anything about his game that you'd like to see him improve on in the next few Everything. Years? Everything. You know, I mean, yeah. Probably pass protection, you know, if anything. You know, that's often an overlooked area of, of a running back skill set. Uh, but they are called on time, at times to block, you know, defensive ends, to block blitzing linebackers, you know, and uh, I'd like him to, to continue to improve there. I think he's made tremendous improvement, but he's a, he, He's got excellent hands, he runs good routes, you know, he's elusive, he can run between the tackles. There's not a lot that he doesn't do well. Is there much difference in, in how you guys use the running backs in, in pass protection this year compared to last year? It's... No. You know, scheme to scheme, it, there's, no, there's no difference. Running backs typically have to block at times, you know, you have to keep them in the block. The reason that it's difficult initially for young guys is that in high school, if you're the guy, you know, if you're the so-so Jamabo in high school, you have the ball in your hands or you're running a route. And so you don't get a lot of work at doing things like that. You don't get to block because they never ask you to. But as you step up a level to go to college or you step up another level to go to, to the NFL, then those skill sets, you know, the, the ability to block and protect and identify who to block and sort things out, those become much more important because you cannot be as one dimensional at this level and the next level as you can be in high school. Brandon sort of came out of nowhere and was a really effective compliment to so so. What did he shown you the last couple of weeks to get that opportunity? You know what it's it's really been since the first day he stepped on campus. You know, it hasn't just been the last couple of weeks, it's been a slow build. He uh, he's very mature. Uh, you know, he said to uh, Audie the first day of camp and overheard, he said, No one should ever know we're freshmen. You know, that was kind of his mindset. And, um, and he's reacted that way. You know, he's been dependable. He's shown maturity. He's shown toughness. He's shown the ability to learn. Um, and, you know, all along we felt like he was a young man that had the ability to help us this year. And so we wanted to get him some carries. And I think that he's earned them. And I think he's earned more the way that he played on Saturday night. As far as injuries, uh, Tack, is he making progress? To Tax making progress, and um, you know we'll go through the week, and hopefully he'll be available Saturday night. You know we talked about Eddie; he'll go through the week. Hopefully he'll be available Saturday night. Um, you know, uh, Dion, we suited Dion up, as you guys probably saw. Uh, hopefully, you know, you know he'll go through the week and be available. Cam, hopefully he'll be. You know, his shoulder will feel better. Hopefully, Julio will feel better as we go through the week and be available. Um, Scott came out late. Scotty came out late. Scotty's okay. That was. Uh, you know, that was, uh, he got stepped on and they cramped up a little bit. He's okay. Uh, what was Jaleel's injury? Who? Jaleel, what was that? Uh, he's just bumps and bruises, you know. He's, he's not a big guy and he plays so darn hard. I mean, he just, he goes after it all the time. And he just, he's, he's, a, he's a competitive son of a gun. So, you know, what we'd like to have everyone available. The reality is, is that, you know, this is football and it's a, it's a collision sport and, and guys get banged up. and. We have to make sure that we're doing a really good job of monitoring where they are and not putting them in a situation at this point in their life where they can get uh, hurt to the extent that they can't recover from it. You know, so you always balance that. You balance the, you know, the desire to have everybody playing so you're full strength with, with the reality that you have a responsibility to these young men to make sure that uh, you're doing the right thing for them for their long-term health. Was Austin Roberts hurt as well last week? No. So you, he played. He did play. Oh yeah, he played a lot. Yeah, Austin. <laughs> Austin played, caught a ball, caught a ball. I think didn't he put it in the stats and catch the ball? I didn't notice. But yeah, maybe my own <laughs> one of those four, thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, I think yeah. Austin. All right. Right. No, he played. Yeah, Austin played. You said Cam. That means Cam Judge with a shoulder. Cam Judge, Cam Griffin, both of them were suited. You know, both of them hopefully will be available this week. So. What about Nate? Is he available this week? Uh, you know, he'll go through the week and hopefully he'll be available Saturday. With Kalani now at BYU, are there a lot of similarities between what they're doing and what Oregon State did last year? Um, some, you know, Ty Detmer now is their offensive coordinator. I meant defensively, obviously. Oh, you meant defensively? Um, I haven't watched much of their defense yet. I spent most of last night watching their offense. So I'll get into their defense now, you know, this afternoon. It's been a long road for Taysom Hill. What are sort of your early impressions of him? 
He's resilient. He's competitive. He's tough. Um, I mean, he's ever had to overcome a lot of adversity, a lot of injuries, and he just keeps showing up and competing like crazy. If you watch the Utah game, um, you know, you saw some great runs. You saw just, you know, what you'd expect of him, that, that toughness and that grit that he's displayed his whole career. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Everyone have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.